you ever wonder what a Gen X thinks, welcome to Gen X Slices, where I take a slice of one of my dad's live stream and I give it to you so you don't have to go through hundreds of hours of live streams just to find the funny or serious parts. This one is about my dad about talking about confronting teenagers and it's about a lot about family. And uh, <laughs> sometimes he kicks kids out at their 18th birthday and that's all I'm going to say. So uh, here you go. So yeah, you just uh, you get to that point where you tell it when you tell a kid that uh, there's nothing I can there's no reward I can offer you. Do you want a brand new car? Will you behave and act correctly for a brand new car? He wouldn't do it. All right, if you don't do it, the punishment is I'm going to nail you to a cross and float you upside down in a hot air balloon until you hit the stratosphere and I'm gonna drop you on your head. Won't change a fucking thing. But when I sit with, and I've, I've had to do very, very few times, but a couple times with a couple of kids, I've had to say, you know, I just, I just kind of want you to make as little waves for me as you can. Let's just kind of coexist as quietly, please. But at 18, could you please pack your stuff and just go somewhere? I would really appreciate that. Now, here's the other thing that I did with some older kids that the younger kids really paid attention to. Now, listen to me here. Yes, I know you're probably all yelling, terrible parenting. What are you saying? I got you. All right. Okay. You do you. Let me do me. But I remember sitting at one of my sons down one time. He turned 18 and I said, um, I, and he was, he was not behaving at all. Disrespectful. He turns 18 and I said, so um, here's what's going to happen. Tomorrow is your 18th birthday and I'm going to give you a $100 bill, uh, a one-way bus ticket anywhere you want to go, and some luggage. And I'd like you to pack up your luggage and I will drive you to the bus station and then we can shake hands as men and you go on your way. He says, are you kidding? I said, no, no, no. Now, I, I just don't want you to live here anymore. And I don't have to have you here anymore. I don't, I'm, my, my, my time with the state is over. We're, we're done. We're, I'm, I'm done. My obligation with you is over. I don't have to do this anymore. And he sat there and said, well, why don't you want me to still stick around? I said, well, you're not helpful with your chores. You fuck all your chores up all the time. Okay. You're terrible with your chores. You argue with me and your mother. You're disrespectful. You don't treat your brothers and sisters very well. You don't obey any of the curfews or anything that we have set around the house. Um, why Why would I want you here? What, what do you bring to the table? In fact, sell it to me. Sell yourself to me. Why should I let you stay? Give me a list of all the great things you do around here for us. Do you help your youngers and brothers and sisters with their homework? No. Do you do your chores correctly? No. Are you polite and courteous? No. Do you argue? Yeah, you do. Do you follow the rules and coming home on time? Do, no, you don't do those either. Tell me, sell yourself to me. Right now, I was sitting him on the curb out front, and I said, sell yourself to me. Tell me why I should let you back in that door. Come on, tell me about how, how good you are for the family, how, how our blood pressures will all go down because you're around. And he was almost crying because he knew he had nothing. He was just an arrogant fucking prick. And he knew he had nothing to sell himself with. So he falls back on, we're family. We're, we're, we're family. I said, okay, all right, maybe I missed something here. I'm listening because all kids do this. At some point, they come crying and go, well, I know I fucked up, but we're, we're family and you're you're supposed to uh, accept me and uh, and uh, let me, because we're family. Aren't you supposed to go the extra mile for me? Because we're family. Aren't you supposed to continue to do for me? Because we're family. What what kind of person are you? We're family. And I listened. He had the whole story memorized, I'm sure. And at the end of it, I said, "Okay, um, I understand this whole this family dynamic you're speaking of. Let me let me break it down. Let me try to plug it in a little bit. What am I fucking missing here? Let's see." Family. So family does things for others, even when they don't want to, because I don't want you here. But you want me to let you stay here because we're family. You want me to go out of my comfort zone. Where was this whole family thing when you were arguing with your mother, making her cry? Shouldn't you have stopped and said, well, I'm sorry, mom, we're family and I'm arguing with you. Let, let me stop doing that right now. And I don't want to make you. We're family. I shouldn't be doing this. Where is the whole family when you're fucking up every chore for the past year? Not caring. 
not doing them on, dad, does it drag you kicking and screaming to your chores? Shouldn't you have said, dad, sorry about that. Um, we're family. And under the heading of family, under the relationship of family, let me, let me go do my chores the correctly. We're family. I don't want to do them, but let me, let me go outside my comfort zone, do something I don't want to do, which is these damn chores. I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of socially obligated to do them. It's family. I brought that right up to him and said, where was all this family back then when, when you should have been behaving correctly, when you should have been giving to the family, doing for the family? Now, you, you haven't been, but now, now, no, no. Now you're going to play that family card. Now, family is important. I don't know. Got to have, it's dad, that's family. We've got to stick together. We've got to do for each other. I said, oh, now, now that you're sitting on a curb on your 18th birthday, now, now family is important. Now we're supposed to start doing for each other, even though we don't really want to. Yeah, I'm going to politely decline and say you're full of shit. I'm going to politely say you just saying all this family stuff when it suits you. I'm going to say all this family stuff is because now, now, it, now it fits what you need. Because certainly a year ago, if I had sat you down and said, you know, son, you really ought to be nicer around here and better to your brothers and sisters and do your chores. I mean, family, you'd have laughed at me. But real quick, those stories, what? No story. I was wondering if you guys ate or you make dinner. No, nah, we're fine. Thank you. Okay. So that's the story I got. It's the family story. It's the obligation. And he wanted to pull me right in and go, what are you doing? You can't do this. We're family. He couldn't sell himself to me. He couldn't give me He couldn't give me five or six things. Like, Dad, you, you need me around here. I mean, I do all my chores correctly. I finish all my dinner. I help with mom with the dishes. I don't. Come on. You don't want to lose me. I'm a gold star son around here. Come on. You don't. And I have told all my kids that I said, when you turn 18, you want to be the child that I beg to stay. Please don't go. You do so much for us around here. You are so, you're so pleasant to be around here. Don't go. And believe me, I've had a couple that I'm like, man, I, I know you're going, but I want you to know I'm seriously going to miss you. I love watching TV with you. I love communicating around the dinner table with you. I want you to know I have no problem with you whatsoever. You are a joy to be around. Oh, yeah, I've done that. And there's some that you're kind of like, I could take them or leave them. You want to go? Oh, it's time. You're 18. Have a good time, man. We'll catch you around and we'll come back over for dinner. So we're good. It's kind of like, yeah, it's time to go. It's, 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 you do, you, you do, we're fine. And then there's some on the other end that you, there, you fight with them the entire time. But boy, when you set them on that curb at 18 and go, why should I let you back in the door? Sell yourself. I'll take you right back up the, the, the walkway right now. Sell yourself to me. Come on now. Give it to me. Tell me why. Are you, are you so great? Tell me why you're such a great son. Tell me what you do great around here. In fact, if I put it to a vote, a, a, a silent vote, where you didn't know who was voting, how many of your brothers and sisters would tell me to keep you? How many of your brothers and sisters would be glad for you to be gone because you're just a pain in the ass? Now, Gen Z kid, he's only 16, so I didn't give him that speech, but he's heard it. He's heard it. He knows. So when all this tension came around and all this shit, and I said to him, I go, you know, you know that speech I give when 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 a complete fuck up turns 18 or you're just irritating the shit out of everybody. I said, you got 18 months to go or so. So you're 18. You got 18 months to figure out what speech I'm going to give you. 18 months. That's it. And you're going to get one of those two speeches, one of the three speeches, really. I'm either going to beg you to stay because you're just indispensable. I'm going to not really care one way or the other. It's like, yeah, if you want to move out, that's good. If you want to stay, that's fine. You, you know, it's kind of a, yeah, how do you feel? What are you doing? One of those, it's nonchalant. Or you're going to get the third speech of, I can think of a hundred reasons I don't need you to be here. Give me two that you should stay. And when they can't, the family speech comes out. You know that. So that's what happened. Uh, he wanted to be, he wanted to get his phone out of the bottom of the pool, which is really the only thing he had left that, that Gen X mom hadn't taken away from him. Literally had taken everything away. He was allowed to sit next to one of us and do Gen X talk stuff if he needed to go and put up something or do some stuff or answer some people and talk. Yeah, he could do that. Um, but that was it. 
he really has nothing. No TV in his room. No no electronics. No one. He has. Uh, I'm sorry. He has an Alexa dot in his room so that we can contact him. Go, hey, get up, come in here, or so it has an alarm to wake him up. That's it. The last thing he kind of had a little bit of a privilege with was his phone because he said, "Well, I need it for school. Little stuff in here. I want a little cup." And when I got done, it was at the bottom of the pool, and I wouldn't let him go get it. He said a bunch of people on the thread, like, why didn't you just jump in and get it? He, I go, what'd you tell him? He goes, because you'd have whooped my ass if I'd have jumped in that water. I said, yeah, and I'd have made you throw it back in the bottom yourself. So he waited till this morning. He did get it out. And he put it in a bowl of rice. I it's going to work. I don't know. Um, I may throw it back in as soon as he's done and tells me it works. I'll be so mad. But you guys, I guess it's been a thing because I got some emails. I got some stuff. And I, I was so mad. I didn't even want to. I was supposed to go on last night. We were supposed to have this thing last night. Remember, it was the reverse um, trivia where you guys asked me questions. And if I couldn't answer them, uh, you know, fair questions, that I was going to give you guys prizes all fucking night. I was looking forward to that shit, man. You guys were going to give me 80s music and movies trivia. And I was if I if it was a legitimate one and I couldn't get it, I was going to I was going to tell you. Yeah, you won. Here, give me your address, man. I'll send you something. I was looking forward to that. But the mood was dampened after two years of culmination of this fucking shit I've been dealing with. The two months of the school shit. Him being late repeatedly, late again last night. Everything, anger was at level nine. And then you'd think he would have come home going, okay, all right, everybody calm down. Let me just do my chores and let me get in my room. No. That dude went out in the middle of his first chore and was fucking off. And I shit a purple Twinkie. I shit a fucking purple Twinkie 12 feet long. Yep. And that's the speech. That's how it fucking went. Now, I told you guys I couldn't get over here. There's a bunch of colors flash. I promise I'll go back and read them. I'll go back and read them. We'll do them, we'll do them together. I'm not just hanging up. We'll do them together. But you guys wanted to know where that shit fucking came from. You wanted to know the culmination of where I'm at. You wanted to know a little background on how I handle those kids and stuff. All right. One more stupid thing that isn't the kid's fault that goes along with this. That story for where I, why I was in LA today and that shit. Let me do, and it ties into my frustration. And then I got to drive fucking over the hill. Give me a minute. Let me go back. <laughs> let me do two things. Let me get all the colors that came up here. Somebody's going to be fucking drinking with me after I raise these colors and scroll down. We'll do it together. M.G. Rosser, I was like that. It served me well in front of a judge. <laughs> but as an adult, I realized the same skill put me in front of the judge for the first place. Yep. Isn't that the goddamn truth? Um, and liars like that think that everybody believes their shit, and they don't. And I told them so, too. I go, nobody believes you when you're doing this stuff. You you think you're getting away with it. nobody. Everybody just looks at you and goes, what, are you fucking nine? Are you 12? No one believes you. You think they do. But they don't. Kind of like a drug addict. All right. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Nia, Nia, Nila, Nia, feeling. Do you live in feeling? That's a weird symbol. What really matters to you, General? Don't you? What really matters to me? There's a lot. Feeling, there's a lot that does. Um, well, we can get into that. Uh, let me bounce down, bounce down. Boy, Allie's been all over you guys. You guys have been assholes tonight? I can't read him. It just says deleted, deleted, deleted. I don't know why she didn't just ban you. If you guys are fucking up, she had to just kick your ass out. Uh, Coracan, $9.90 says, public education is a joke. Groomed to be indebted to the workforce. All you need is a financial education. He's manipulative, but in a dumb way. <laughs> yeah. Gen Z, just get your crap right, kid. Play the game. He's going to see all this stuff. He's going to read every one of these. Good advice there. Good for him to see that. Yeah, a big old color on that. Thank you for doing that. I'm scrolling for the colors now so I can get to the bottom. Josh Smith. Here's 10 sword buying the kid 12 rules for life by George Jordan Peterson. I've got that around here somewhere. The audio book is free at the moment, but there's a workbook that helps help me. Maybe the kid can get some use out of it. He could Josh try to get him to read it, man. You got to pay 10 bucks to get the, towards the book and then to pay him $10 to fucking read it. I'm, I, I, you, I'm telling you. Okay. 32 kids I've raised. This is tough, but now we're going, okay, calm down. But but on, but on. Uh, Rich B, I tell my girls that family has to be responsible to family. Yeah, and, and Rich, that's not, and you, I'm sure you tell them it's not just a one-way street. 
you you can't just pull out the family card when you're about to get kicked out of the house and you can throw whoa 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 family man come on but rich girls are so much harder to raise than boys oh that's so hard ah uh, chris hansen tw- got the 20 dollar bill i my biggest fear is raising an entitled prick granted i'm able to provide a lot more than what i was able to afford i i need to stay grounded and keep these kids in check you do and you have an up word fight because you have social media reminding them they're entitled how you have social media and teachers pounding into them all the things that you don't believe and saying hey and by the way if your dad fucks with you if you don't like the way he's raising you did you know you have rights as a child did you know that you have rights on how you're being raised you're not you don't you don't deserve to be raised in an uncomfortable household you get if if your dad you tell us okay We'll get a hold of the right people and we'll sit your dad down and we will educate him on keeping the house comfortable. If he lays a hand on you, if he grabs you, if he even raises his voice and scares you to the point where you can't breathe, you tell us. And how do I know that's true? Because I had a daughter that did that. And there was a swarm of people at my front door demanding that I change the way I parent and change my rules because I was affecting my child negatively. I was damaging them for the future. I was emotionally sacrificing my child right in front of them. And they were there to tell me how I was going to raise my child and that my child had rights and my child had parameters. Now, where they got that from is people beating their kids. Yeah, you got to step in and go, okay, you can't do that. Well, I'm parenting the way I want. I want to beat my kids. No, you don't. You can't do that. That's wrong on every fucking level. You can't do that. So you step in with people and you go, you're not going to hurt your kids. You're not going to break their bones. You're not going to knock them unconscious. You're just not going to do this kind of stuff. You're taking it too far. This is abuse. And we all kind of go along with that, right? Because you don't want, you know, you you step in. You want to protect the child. We all do. Every one of us. So you think, all right, we stepped in, we did good there. And that same group of people that we empowered to go protect children. Now they decide what protecting children really means. Well, if can I protect them from this? What if they're screaming at them? What if they're raising their hand, but they don't hit them? But that's not right. That's that's fear and intimidation. Well, yeah, you, you, I'd prefer the parent not do that, but they're not hitting the child. So you start discussing that. But then they go further. What if yelling at the child? They actually go so far as don't make them watch that TV program. You're making them watch stuff that's wrong. You're poisoning their mind. You're ruining them for the future. And we're going to make you stop. Probably one of the only times that I probably should have been restrained by a peace officer that for some reason they decided to be on my side was telling these people in the nicest possible way to go fuck themselves. And I mean, you guys have heard me rant about stuff. You've never heard me rant at 11 or 12 people that are standing on my property, my front door, just itching to get through my front door to tell me how to raise my children. I'd be kicked off of every platform known to man. God would turn his back on me if he had to listen to that rant again. But it happens. And it happens all the time. And you're talking about, Chris, you're talking about where and how you raise them. That's what you're up against. Now, you may fly into the radar and just deal with some of the regular shit. But once in a while, you're going to get some, you're going to be a lightning rod for some dude or some chick who's got a heart on for you. And man... They're going to make a phone call and bring the whole army with them. Pick your battles right now because there's some you're not going to be able to avoid. Sorry. (sighs) What the fuck am I doing here? Okay. Me Rude dropped the 999. My dad passed away last April. He was a tough on me and taught me to be a man. I will be forever thankful. And I've tried to be the same with my Gen Zers. Great parenting general. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Thank you, because I need to know there's other people out there like you, like Chris, that give a shit, that aren't just fucking letting it slide by, that don't just pat. 
you know, people on the back say, okay, thanks for your input with my child. We'll see you next time. No, no. You pat them on the back and thank you for your input as you walk them down the driveway. Thank you for being so concerned that you drove all the way to my house. It really means a lot to you. And you get to the end of the driveway and you turn them in the face. Get the fuck out of here. There's people that are out of just to destroy your family. You, you, you got to distance yourself from them. You, you have to distance yourself. I'm telling you. John Zabel, I remember being in the same position uh, that boy is. You did everything that father, that my father did, despite everything I still want. My way took 10 years to fix things instead of learning earlier from. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I'm with you on that. I can pour out as much love as anybody. I can, I can, I can surround my kids, love and protect them to where they feel completely safe with warmth and structure. There's food in the pantry. There's, there's, there's beverages to drink. The temperature of the house is good. And when I lock the house, they feel safe and protected. And then when you sit down to guide them at a small age, they politely look back and say, no. Now they don't all follow that path, but when they do, and they're nine, and then they're 12, and then they're 15, and then they're 17. And as they got bigger, the no got louder. Like I told you guys, there are literally times, and some of you as parents, you know this, there's some times when you, you, you can offer a child any reward. Please behave this way. Do these things, please. And, and, and I will give you a million dollars. Here's a bag of a million dollars. I'm going to hand it to you. They will not do it. All right, never mind. If you if you don't do these things, now I've tried reward. If you don't do them, I'm going to nail you to a cross, turn it upside down, strap it to a hot air balloon, take you to the stratosphere, and drop you out of it on your fucking head. And even if they know you're serious, they will not change. Which is why that speech that I gave you guys earlier sometimes is the most powerful thing. Because the, you sit them on the curb and say, why, would I, why should I let you live here? Why, why should I give me something? And they, when you explain it to them like I told you, they all of a sudden realize, oh, wow, I don't, I don't have a free ticket here anymore. I'm really going to have to, I'm going to have to sell myself. And they can't. They got a track record of going, I don't, I don't want you to work here anymore. You're fired. And they play the family card. Now, I... I hate saying, well, and I, and I taught you how to deal with that. No, I'm not teaching you guys anything. I'm, I'm just expressing the, the fucked up way I dealt with it. How to, how to lay the family card back out and go, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. So you, you, you're, you, I'm not, did I give you an answer? No. Did I give you a solution? No. All I've said is you got to, when I was like talking to John or talking to Chris saying, you, you got to fight. You got a big fight because you got you got outside influences. It's one of the biggest arguments I get in is I always, always say millennials are fucked up because, you know, oh, they're fucked up. And, I, and I'm talking about later ones. What is the only argument that, well, you raised us. You Gen Xers raised us. If we're fucked up, it's your fault. Really? Well, let's see. Uh, Gen X was the first generation that went to jail for parenting correctly. Um, Gen X was the first one who had every fucking outside influence involved in raising our kids, including the late models with the internet, teachers, coaches. Everybody started integrating and indoctrinating all the way down to fifth and sixth grade, interfering with how you raise kids. There were social workers and caseworkers and judges. And we're the first generation that had to put up with all that shit. Sticking in Dr. Spock's book was on your doorstep. You got a yellow pages and you got a Dr. Spock book and you better fill it out and sign it. I know it was a little before my time, but you get the point. Um, outside influences. I don't think, looking back, I don't see, I I, I feel like I co-parented with 10,000 assholes. And I was the only one who really cared about my kid. There were so many fingers trying to get, and you guys have to deal with it worse than I do. Because you the the the, the, the people that are out there right now, Helping you parent your kids are the ones that sit your kid down and go, I need you to express your, your, your feelings. Tell me everything. How's it going at home? How do you feel about your mom, your dad? How do you feel about everything in life here? Let me, because I'm going to understand and I'm going to help you work through it. 
but they don't. They listen to the whole thing. And you know what their version of working through it is? That child will say, good, I need some help here. I'm really mixed up inside. I'm going to tell you everything and, and you're going to help me, right? And they get all the way done. And what do some of these people do? Some of these people look, oh, everything you just said is valid. Everything you said is correct. There, there's no incorrect feelings here. What's a 10-year-old supposed to do with that information? Walk home and go, hey, dad, just by, let everybody know today that you're kind of an asshole. I don't like how you parent. Oh, and I was told I was right. So, any of this making sense at all? Even a little bit? All right. Let me scroll back down. Who did I miss? Boy, Allie is really working, you guys. She's just going to ban you. Oh, there's so many deleted messages. You guys got to keep... You guys must really be stepping on your dicks about this shit. I don't know what that means. I'm trying to learn you guys' language on some of this, but I'm lost. Did Chris Hansen's? I think I caught up, Rich B. I tell my girls that family has to... Yeah, we talked about that, family for family, but it's got to go both ways, man. You can't just play the family card when you're the kid on your way out the door. All right. I think I got caught up with everybody that was on the colored stuff, um, the blue, the green, the red, the purple, all the stuff right there. So now I scroll back down. Okay. Does anybody want to have a drink with me? You guys can all leave the chat room now. Um, there's a bunch of you in here. Thank you guys for showing up. But anybody who wants to stay for any other story, uh, we still got the, the hot water heater story still coming. <laughs> Come on, don't make me raise my glass alone. There's not one fucking person going to say cheers. There we go. Genix dad logged off not too long later. And I'd like to say thank you to everyone who requested I make a Gen X slice out of this. And, um, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is how the chicken crossed the road. See you next time.